What's up guys, Chris here at the Comor store in Whistler and I'm here to preview the 2020 LibTech snowboard range here with Andreas, our local snowboard guru. Hey guys, what's going on? So yeah, I'm excited. We got lots of new boards, we got some popular ones and you're gonna take us through and show us what's up. Yeah man, like a kid in a candy store. What we have on this side is our kind of T-Rice or T-Rice inspired snowboards and this is, if you guys don't know T-Rice, he's the man, he's LibTech's main guy. Travis Rice Pro Model is always a standard board for Whistler. Great all-rounder, twin shape, firm enough to be an all-mountain board, goes everywhere, has a cross hybrid shape, so rocker between the feet, camber underneath the foot. You get a little bit of both worlds. It's both easy to turn and initiate, but at the same time, you get a little bit of grip under the foot, which is good for stability and good for pop. Yeah, this is the board I was riding for the majority of last year, and I absolutely loved it. Amazing through the trees, that was probably my favorite thing. It turns on a dime, and uh, I loved it. It just kind of like pow and smash through the bumps and just keeps on coming back for more. So, so these are the, these two are both Travis Rice different graphics on the top, but this one obviously has a blunted nose, and this one has a pointed nose. Yeah, so within the T-Rice lineup, they've done this uh, a few years. You could argue that in the smaller sizes, the blunted nose is better for somebody who might be utilizing the board for park elements. If you were to ram this into the edge of something while you're jibbing or hitting a rail, it's less likely that you're going to kink the edge in, you're going to kink the rail in. Versus on the slightly longer version here in this bigger size, the more rounded nose is better for allowing the board to plane out of the snow giving it better flotation. Really, the difference is more just how they're cut. It's nominal. I wouldn't say that it's like, oh, you know, this one won't float in powder. It's just they try to change it up a little bit. Yeah, I think it's more of whichever you prefer. It doesn't affect the overall riding. Not too much, no. When you check out this guy over here, the t Ras, it's the exact same board as a Travis Rice Pro model. Chris Rasman is a... He's a man boy. Yeah, he's one of the original man boys. Uh, fantastic snowboarder and so he's one of the guys that will often rip Travis's shape and so this year they gave him uh, Travis's shape but with his own top sheet. So he so, kind of ripped off Travis's shape. <laughs> yeah but like he's well aware like it is part of the decision. <laughs> All legit. Yeah that's why it's the t Ras. so it's like the Travis Ras. I would say that the cool thing about this board is because it's Chris Rasman it definitely throws a bit of a Canadian flavor on top of the board you know it creates a a Canadian story. Maple. <laughs> so if you love all the elements of a Travis Rice Pro model, but you want something that's, you know, specifically Canadian, uh, the Chris Rasman top sheet is pretty awesome. What I've been saying, this is available in a size that the T-Rice is not. Yeah, this one's available in the 159, and it only comes in a 159. It's sort of a special one-off. So 159 would be perfect for, you know, that person sort of in and around that 180 to 190 build. Five, uh, five, ten or so, this would be perfect for me. The Orca was one of the most talked about boards last year. A lot of people could not get one when they wanted to. But yeah, tell us about this board. Yeah, so the Orca flew off the shelves last year. It was one of our most popular boards. I actually rode an Orca last season. And this board is just a great board as a, an all around directional free ride board that can still do a little bit of park, it can still do a little bit of freestyle. A uh, great board for Whistler. It takes all of the elements of the Travis Rice snowboard that you know and love, but it sets it back a little bit, makes it directional, and then they've also made the board slightly wider so that it's really easy to lay into your turns, to lay into your carves, and to have a lot of confidence on your edges, which also uh, makes it very easy to float with as well. And the extra volume that you get in the width allows you to buy the board a little bit shorter. Yeah, you get a lot of kick, a lot of pop out of the back camber in this board. And then you'll also see that the tail is flat. So it gives it a lot of surface area for you to really load your, your ollies off of. And it makes the tail very predictable. Now there's a 147, so that if you're a lighter person, a shorter person, or, or maybe a lady, or a lady, or somebody with a smaller footprint imprint on their board, you can get this board and you can still really rail with it. I think all of them are really good boards. All of them are suited towards this kind of like Northwest style powder, drops, charging, all that type of stuff. So if that's what you guys are interested in doing, definitely have a look at these boards. So next four boards uh, we got here, we have uh, kind of split up into two groups. We have the Cold Brew and the Dynamo, 
and the stump paper and the skunk cases. Yeah, so the cold brew and the dynamo are similar style boards. They're both designed for free ride and they're directional boards, but again, most lip deck boards are capable for freestyle oriented stuff as well. Just because it's directional doesn't mean that you can't do tricks with it. A little bit of a longer front shovel on both of these guys, so they're definitely going to be more than capable when you have a powder day, when you have some deeper snow, and it's a good all-rounder category. The cold brew is still utilizing a C2 hybrid shape, so it has a rocker camber hybrid profile where there's rocker between the feet, camber under the foot. The rocker in this guy here in the cold brew makes it slightly easier to initiate slightly looser feeling versus... A little bit more like holding on by the seat of your pants kind of thing, right? Yeah, you know, some people would argue that it actually takes a little bit more skill to ride with a bit of a rockered section because it can be looser and therefore less... Tiny bit more unpredictable. Yeah, maybe. less stable. But what you gain from that rockered section is turning initiation and flotation. Yeah. And then the Dynamo, this is a brand new snowboard for this year. Yeah. That's rocking the C3. C3. So it's a very similar board to the cold brew, but instead you're going to find that having the camber dominant profile makes the board a little bit more aggressive, makes it slightly more higher end intermediate. You're going to find that you get more power and more pop out of this board, but at the same time it's a little bit less forgiving and it's not as uh, easy to use. Yeah, like you would argue that because it's a full cambered board, you're going to be able to load the board more, you're going to get more pop out of the board. You'll also find that your landings are going to be more stable because the whole board is going to suck you in like a suction cup when you make that landing. Oh, nice. Yeah, that also gives you more rebound when you're carving. You can imagine driving into the turn, you have to drive it into that position, but then it wants to rebound back again out of that turn. So it really gives you explosive pop. It's versus like when you push down a spring. Yeah, yeah, it springs back at you. Versus that cold brew, not as much pop, but definitely easier to maneuver in tighter areas. That's how I would separate it. So then we got the two apes. We got the stump ape and the skunk ape. Yeah, so the skunk ape has always been a classic in the Lip Tech lineup. It's very similar to a Travis Rice snowboard, but slightly set back. And the whole concept with the, stunk, with the Skunk Ape series is that it's made wide specific. So that it definitely helps out those guys that have a size 11 boot and beyond. So the, the Stump Ape is a wide board. We're going to you know, go into that. But I can't even like pull it out of the shit. <laughs> this thing is like pinched and it's so wide. Yeah, so the Stump Ape is the same mentality as sort of what the Orca is to the Travis Rice boards. It's a fattened, shorter version of the Skunk Ape. Just looking at it, it looks like it's just ultra wide. I think like, so it has a bit of taper on the outside of the contact points to the top, right? You can see the no nose is absolutely ginormous on this board. This thing will be a floating machine. And would you say it's kind of similar to the, the Warpig? In the same range, probably even wider. But this guy's gonna be great for that person who has that 14 size foot or, you know, 11 to 14 size foot and still want something that's super nimble and floaty and easy to maneuver on. A lot of fun with something like this. Are you talking about the skunk ape already? Yeah, no, slightly. I remember uh, last year when we were talking about what board you should pick up, this was one of the options. It's very similar to the build on a Travis Rice, although it is directional, so it's set back slightly. And then it has a harder base, which is designed for, uh, you know, being able to deflect off rocks and roots and that kind of thing, but because it's a harder base, it doesn't absorb wax as nicely as the Travis Rice. So I would say the Travis Rice has maybe a slightly faster base to it. So we got the final four in our Lip Tech group today. So I guess we'll start over here with the E-Jack knife. This is Eric Jackson's board, and it does, by going by the graphics, this just seems Eric Jackson through and through. We got the double banjo at the top, and then just like, the life of salmon with the banjos. Yeah, that's what he likes. He likes to fish, and I guess he likes playing banjos. Eric Jackson's a man's man. He's from the outback, from the country, and he yeah. likes banjos and catching fish. His beard has got a beard on the beard. The E-Jack knife is designed to be everything that Eric Jackson wants out of a pro model board. 
it's still designed to be directional, so it has a little bit of a setback to it, definitely a longer front end. Yeah, his whole concept is boards that are designed for all mountain use, that can go back country, that can go into the trees, into the powder, but it's all still very freestyle oriented. Back to the magnet traction, but it seems really mild. Yeah, it's a mellower magnet traction, and some of their boards, they make the magnet traction very aggressive, which really gives you a lot of bite. And then some of the other boards, they've made the magnet traction a little bit more mellow, less aggressive, so that it doesn't give you as much of a slowing effect when you're carving hard. And I actually prefer the more aggressive magnet traction because it really does grip in and gives you that sense of confidence when you're on an icy day. The backside of Peak on an icy day is is no laughing matter, so I love having magnet traction. <laughs> well, now that you've rested your case and you find it guilty, let's move on to the litigator. The litigator. This is your classic 1980s snowboard. Back in the day, snowboards were longer, they were firmer, they were stiffer, and you could uh, This is like what you, you know, the old school way of measuring a snowboard, like measure it between your chin and your nose. Yeah, this board is a 170 in length. But they, and it's the only size. <laughs> they even go to call it out as a 5'7". Yeah, they don't put the centimeters on here. This is purely a 5'7 snowboard. Isn't Tom Cruise like 5'7"? Yeah. Yeah, he's like fairly probably shorter. Short. Yeah, so he's this probably... is like the size of Tom Cruise. But yeah, this is Jamie Lynn's pro model, or one of the Jamie Lynn pro models. Uh, don't forget the titty fish. <laughs> yeah, or just the, the regular Jamie Lynn. But yeah, the litigator is definitely a big boy, designed for hard charging, designed for a lot of stability and powder. This thing will give you really good flotation being as long as it is. And uh, it's not for the, you know, the, the average intermediate level rider. It's would definitely- you, Do you think you would like this board? Oh, I think I would tear it up on this board, but I wouldn't necessarily sell this to like, the guy who's first year to Whistler and is like, hey, hey man, I want something that goes everywhere. I think that this would be a great board for the person who's looking for speed and stability. The person who comes from like a race background that wants something that charges hard or the person that wants a really big front shovel for flotation. This board would probably actually be really good in the pipe as well. Or if you want the human anatomy with a neon cat face. It's definitely one of their like experimental divisions. Yeah, the experimental division is sort of not their main line, but stuff that people really enjoy because it's a little bit out there. It's got a, it's got a niche. <laughs> yeah. Speaking right. of experimental. So the MC Snake Cake. Yeah. So the Matt Cummins Pro Model. Again, an all mountain charger designed for a little bit of everything, whether you want to take it in the powder, in the park, it goes everywhere. It is directional, but the, the coolest thing about this board, other than its awesome top sheet, is there's a camber in the nose of the board. The concept is, is that you're not gonna feel this weird shaped nose when you're just riding on hard pack or on groomer, but once you take the board into deeper snow, into some powder, it's really going to engage the front shovel of this thing, giving it that rebound and float that you want on a powder day so that you can really keep the nose out of the, out of the snow. This looks like what you do for your 10th grade art class. Oh man, there's a giant octopus, there's a shark, there's a mermaid, there's a guy BMX. motor crossing on there. I thought it actually said dad on his helmet, but I think it says rad. Rad. Okay, that makes no, the guy's sense. name is Rick. Right, rad Rick. Rad Rick. So the last board here is the bird, the BRD. And this is the split, as you can see, but they also do it in a non-split. It's one of two splits, right? They do this and the gold member. Yeah, there's a gold member split as well, which is very premium as well. But uh, awesome things about this is that it's using the Karakoram clips on there. So Karakoram clips are the better, lighter weight um, clip that really keeps the board tight together and holds it together nicely. And then it's their C3 design. This is going to be directional. Yes. Yeah, Whereas the gold member is, you can set it up as a twin split. You board. could, yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed our preview of the LibTech range for 2020. Uh, they always have some more boards that aren't here, but we are still early season, so you know we're happy to be in here in Comore checking out the models that we got. If you guys are in Whistler or Vancouver, come check out Comore. But of course, you know, come to Whistler, say hi to Andreas and the rest of the crew here. Yeah. And we'll be able to sort you out. Super knowledgeable. 
and uh, super nice guy. Pleasure coming in here. Go check out Andreas' channel. There should be a button up around here or very soon. Andreas also does snowboard videos here in Whistler. Yeah. So yeah, check him out. That and come into Comor to see me about snowboarding equipment. Word, and check out our next video in Comor where we're going to cover the 2020 GNU models. Yeah, GNU is next week. Yeah, Mueller. Mm hmm, can't wait. GNU, GNU, what are they called? The GNU members. GNU members. GNU. GNU? 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 GNU Garofalo.